Wes ass. I don't know if I'm gonna get this video out or not. My little girl is sick. Y'all met her. The daughter that pops in every so often. I'm debating on whether or not to take her to the emergency room right now. Scratch my mustache and gray big gray showed up. I had to cover that up. Oh. I was tagged by Rob Payless in the five things, whatever, whatever thing. Um, it's three channels that inspire me. Uh, three things I'm good at, and I probably got all these in the wrong order. Um, it, three things I'm excited about, or three things to relax, whichever order they're supposed to be in. And then I'm supposed to tag five other channels. The three channels that inspired me or whatever. Actually, I've been watching these other people's videos on the, the, the challenges or whatever. And uh, it's kind of hard to pick three channels that inspired me to do YouTube. There's a lot of the channels I watch that inspire me in life and stuff like that ah, life and stuff that's one of the channels that I wanted to mention um, but as far as the ones that inspired me to do YouTube actually there a lot of channels that I followed before I ever got a YouTube account channel thing or whatever you, know, you don't have to have one to YouTube in case y'all didn't know that uh, I've been using YouTube as a tool for, I don't know, four, five, six years. Uh, because mechanic and got way ahead of me. Trust me, way, way ahead of me. Uh, I didn't even know where to look for some of these parts, let alone what they were and how to change them. Um, but the three channels that I picked um, on the other side of my notes <laughs> uh, and this is legit about the channels that inspired me to do more with my YouTube channels I posted a, a video about uh, a turtle getting run over in the road a little stuffed turtle That's, that was my first video okay it, I wasn't, I just put it all there so I'd have something on YouTube. And, uh, there's some other ones out there. They're funny. I think they're funny. I think they're real funny. But, uh, it's Viking Preparedness. Uh, he was like, he wasn't trying to get rich off YouTube. He was just using YouTube to tell people about the stuff he'd done or been through or whatever and you know what he was trying to do what he thought people should do um, you know he was putting himself out there because of who he is you know and um, that's something you got to admire in a person and um, he had a lot of good common sense and I was thinking well you know, I'm not that smart, but I'm smart enough. I could do some of these videos. So I started making some stuff. Thinking about making some stuff. Now, honestly, the channel that inspired me the most, I probably should have done these in orders of, of the ones that, uh, you know, the ones that inspired me to do the most videos or whatever. But the one that actually kicked me in the butt and made me got out, get out there and actually start doing videos, making them deliberately, was the Wooded Beardsman. He's a guy with a big red beard from Canada. Uh, his, I will link him in the bottom. Y'all have probably mentioned him in the comments before. On, on some of my videos I reference him. Uh, he's not like a survivalist prepper type dude or whatever. But he's aware there's stuff going on. But he actually puts himself out there. He puts himself through some pretty rough stuff 
and lets us follow along to see what what things are about. And I was like, well, man, this this guy's out there putting in the time. And so, uh, actually, one of my playlists is all about something in response to something he was doing. My whole raccoon thing, that was because of the Beardsman. Every one of those videos is because of what he was doing on his channel. Yeah, it's good. It's a good channel. It's worth. And uh, sub note, the guy that's that appears on his channel quite a lot, uh, one Wildcrafter. You should check him out too. But and the other guy that inspired me to do the kind of videos that I do or that I want to do, the kind of stuff that I want to be doing that I was doing before I got a job, um, is Keith H. Burgess. I believe he's Australian. Uh, apparently he's been playing around with this stuff a long time. This old boy knows some things. He's worth giving a check. And I'll link all these down like I'm supposed to. I'll probably post the video and then have to go in there and edit it because it's easier to post off the phone than whatever. And God, I talk a lot. Uh, let me see if I can speed this up. Anyway, Keith H. Burgess. He's a he's an older dio, but he's still getting out there and doing it. And uh, hopefully, we can start a fire quick. Uh, three things I'm good at. Uh, this was the hardest part of the whole thing is narrowing it down to just three things. I mean, this is me. This is Wes, and Wes stands for really good at everything, basically. Now, right, Kirsten. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, anyway, seeing potential in things and in people. That is something I'm actually good at. Drives my wife nuts. I'll see a, a broke down old car and I'll be like, oh, that could be this or that or whatever. And I'll bring something home and stack it in the yard because I know what that can become. I know what that can do to something else to help the other thing become something else. I can see the potential in things. It's, it's there. I mean, there's so much potential out in the world that's just sitting there going away to nothing. It drives me nuts. Um, this is a skill that I have learned, but I've become very good at it. Detecting male bovine excrement. Excrement. Um, it hasn't always come natural, but I'm pretty good at it now. I can detect male bovine excrement from a distance. Uh, and I got, as a side note down here, interpretive dance. Not really. Uh, and another side note I've got, escaping almost certain death with only minor injuries. I'm actually pretty good at that. Uh, that's something else my wife doesn't like. But the real one that I settled on instead of all those, because, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's hard to narrow it down to just three things. I am a surprisingly off-the-cuff cook. I can walk into a kitchen, find what's there, and turn it into something quite edible very easily. I learned it from my mom, but that's something I'm really good at. Three things to relax. I'm going to tell you all this, and then I'm going to go ahead and tell you all ahead of time, but I'm going to tell you ahead of time that I'm not giving up my man card. Okay? No. I meditate to Native American flute music, sometimes drums. Yes, I did. <laughs> I showed up a man card, and uh, or sometimes I just nature. But yes, I do the whole thing. I meditate. Uh, yeah. If you knew just exactly how high strung I actually am. You would understand that I need to meditate. Uh, I mean, how chilled out I am. You'd understand why I meditate. Uh, number two on the things I do, well, actually, you know, in no particular order or a list of importance, I study the Holy Bible. I spend a lot of time in the Bible. And I always feel way more relaxed during and after than before. So, I'll study that. 
And this one is probably my favorite, which if I could just do it and nothing else, I wouldn't, you know, I would be less of a person for it. But I love B-grade movies. I mean, I'm talking, you know, bad acting, uh, substandard sound, uh, like, not really good special effects and stuff. I, mean, I like good movies too, don't get me wrong. But a, a, a B movie with an actual plot, you know, they gotta have a plot. As long as there was a plot in some level of an attempt to direct and act. Man, I love those things. We, I, I hunt for them. I, I chase them like rabbits. I, I find them, I watch them, I rate them. They're good stuff. Uh, but those are the, the three things I do. And I've actually been caught watching C movies. I usually can't make it all the way through the really, really bad ones. Uh, but I like the, like, the old Sinbad movies, man, the old ones, like, from the 70s and stuff, or, like, Caveman, see, Caveman is a solid B movie, I don't care how big a cult movie it became and everything, Caveman is a B movie, that's the kind of stuff I like, uh, and Giant Scorpions, man, Giant Scorpions is always going to be a good movie. get over here. Three things I'm excited about. Man, this part really sucks. Uh, I don't really get excited about life things because life things can change. Life goals can change. You know, excited about something after the fact is oftentimes more rewarding than excited about the potential for something to come to fruition. Because when you're trying to be excited about something when it hasn't happened yet, or if you're excited about something that's going to happen, and then it doesn't happen, your excitement turns to something completely different. And I don't like that other thing. So I would rather not get excited about something like that until it's done and excited that it happened. I get excited about things that have come all the way through. Not things that could come through or not things that are going to happen or could happen. Things that have happened. I'm excited that I got a beautiful wife and five kids. Play with her some much. Excited about the stuff like that. But I am actually excited about my YouTube channel. Uh, I never thought it would do anything. Uh, I'm surprised that people <laughs> actually, actually have enough time to listen to a guy like me talk about stuff. Uh, I am humbled at the interest and the comments, or by the interest in the comments and, and the following. I, I thank you. Um, yeah, I got a side note here. It says, I haven't received any death threats yet. See? Gave me all that bad. Uh, and the coming Ice Age. I saw a YouTube thing about the coming Ice Age, and I got really, really excited because that means I could possibly, potentially, maybe bag me a mammoth before I go to the grave. Big hairy elephant. I'm out on the wall. I could, I could use it to skull for a beer cooler or something. I don't know. No, I don't like it being hot. I'm a winter kind of guy. I'll put on thermals, a jacket, and I'm good to go. Build a fire. You can always warm up. This, you know. If it's 120 degrees outside, it's 120 degrees whether you're wearing a jacket or you're naked. It doesn't matter. Uh, so yeah, the idea of an ice age really actually has excited me so. And the other one is rehabilitating the local coyote population. Hold one. My wife's taking the girl to the... Uh, 
I'm not allowed to go with the kids to the ER because that I bitch at the part where I need to meditate sometimes. If it's time to treat my kid, get your butt in here and treat my kid. I actually got escorted out of the hospital once. Kiwi, the daughter, you've seen her in the videos, pray for her. Her tonsils are swollen up and this is the third time today we've checked her temperature and it's been over 104. Yes, that thermometer's not broke. It reads that, we check our temperature, our temperature is reading normal, the thermometer's not broke. We can always, we were able to get it come right down, pops right back up. She's going to the hospital. And then after I get through with this video, I'm going to sit here and bang my head on the wall and scream and holler and sing hymns and wait for the phone call to tell me my daughter's okay. Anyway, rehabilitating the local coyote population. I think that if I etch scriptures and behavioral modification, poems and stuff, on the slugs and then just slightly wound them that by osmosis that thought and that feeling within that bullet will transfer into their cerebral cortex and then they will go forth and teach other coyotes that it is uncool to eat chickens that's something I'm excited about I have been known to miss, and instead of getting them in the fleshy part of the butt, shoot them right in the head. But, that's called get cross out tonight. That's an accident, but that's something I'm excited about. Um, somebody, Ben, I've got to go through all my comments now and figure out, this is not a shout out video, or, anyway, but, or a Gaudi video, but y'all shouldn't have watched the video to begin with, you know this is me. Somebody said something about uh, wolf pee or whatever, you know, stuff like that. So, uh, I've been drinking my coffee and then holding it and then running right out the pasture peeing all over here. <laughs> and you know why they're not coming in like they were? They're skirting. They're going around. It's like I got a wall out there. I'm just saying. It's worth looking into. And now I know not to. Next time I go to Deer Blind, I'm taking an empty water bottle, I ain't going to step out and pee anymore. I'm not chasing nothing off. If it's going to run off the, the predator to run off the prey. So, uh, anyway, that's that's the thing. Um, here is, and I'm not going to be Rob, I'm going to be nice like you did and do a short version. This is the one y'all get. Uh, I am going to challenge these guys to do it, or shout or whatever you call it. Uh, Tracy Easel, uh, is called that. We may be cousin. Uh, Joseph Russell is one of the first guys that subscribed to my channel. He was like number five or six, something like that. Seriously, uh, Joseph. Five things, man. Do you? Uh, Georgia Prepper. And I'm going to just give you some letters because I have a hard enough time reading this without busting out laughing. It's capital L, capital O, capital L, G, T, F, O, capital K, I, D. <laughs> anyway, you. LOL, you're, you're whatever. And last but not least, a beardsman, Chris, the Woody Beardsman, that's you, yeah. Five Things Challenge. Uh, let me know, and quit showing all them daggum fishing videos, man. You know, I ain't got to go but one time this year. Uh, and this is month seven. I'm just saying. Anyway, good stuff. Y'all do your deal. Uh, 
just because you're not you didn't make either one of these lists or whatever the like the uh, just because you didn't make my inspire doesn't mean you don't inspire me. These are these are guys that inspired I that I met a long time ago through YouTube. I stumbled on a Viking prepare, preparedness uh, because I Googled something and he popped up specifically in or not Google I searched it uh, a title and uh, he popped up in a suggested video on the side and I was like wow man, let's watch a guy with a beard I don't even remember what it was about I was like Hurr. and uh, I have to to type in, you know, and search them out to, to follow them there for a while, and then my son explained to me that, you know, my dad gets a YouTube channel, and then you, like, subscribe and stuff like that, and you do all this other stuff, and that's what it, uh, and, uh, I am 100% sure that I was actually subscribed to the Beardsman before Viking, and, uh, Keith, uh, actually popped up, a couple of times on the side of stuff when I was watching Viking and the Beardsman and I don't get that because he's totally not related to either of those type deals but because he's like frontier women's type stuff you know do stuff with flint and steel and cleaning your muzzle loader and loading your muzzle loader and living in a tent and all that if you think that old guys can't hang out in the woods just watch that old boy. Um, anyway, that's it. Got uh, only respect for all my subscribers. Uh, the it took me a while to, and I think I don't think I double tagged anybody. Uh, hope I didn't double tag anybody. Uh, but. A lot of the people I watch that have watched the deal have been tagged like everybody that I've subscribed to because y'all limit it to my subscribers, which makes sense because then they would actually watch the video and maybe respond. But anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling now. Got me another snooze can. And they sell fleet collar. I forget the name of it, but it comes in a round tin. I did big around. It's about it's like five inches across. It's about yay deep. Same size as the tin that Keith Burgess uses. So we're gonna have a little pocket size, and then we'll have a back deck size char tin. Char tin, Keith. You just smart old bird. Anyway, yeah. Uh, thanks for y'all's interest in my life thanks for not winning my hat <laughs> almost bought a new one they had the exact hat for five dollars I almost bought it today but I was like no <laughs> why the heck you gonna buy a new hat uh, y'all have a blessed the rest and do your level best not to die when you come into the world it starts trying to kill you it's just the way it is don't let it there is somebody out there that will keep you alive forever you just gotta give them the time of day yeah, have a good one